Hello, this video will give you some tips to begin your own introspective journal. We will be looking at the life and work of Henry David Thoreau as a guide. By the end of this video, you're going to have a pretty solid framework to begin your own journaling adventure and to grow as a person. Let's get into it. There are many ways to journal and many reasons to take up writing. Journals may be used for a specific activity like taking on a new hobby, studying a new language, or even a journal devoted to a specific travel. I suppose I am more of a diarist. I'm exploring and charting every inch of my interior landscape in the hopes of understanding myself better and growing as a person. This is the type of journaling I'd like to share with you today. It requires dedication and an unfaltering honesty with yourself. You need to do a lot of self-exploration and be brave enough to commit these things to the page, even things you are ashamed of. But these are precisely the things that you will learn the most about yourself. And so it's very valuable that you commit them to the page. In 1845, Henry David Thoreau moved to a modest cabin in the woods on land owned by his friend Ralph Waldo Emerson. It was just a few steps away from Walden Pond. Thoreau was born in Concord, Massachusetts in 1817, and he worked in his family's pencil factory. After his studies, he also founded the Concord Academy with his brother John. It was a grammar school that would tragically close four years later when his brother died from tetanus. Thoreau was devastated to lose John, who was also his dearest friend, yet he persevered. Emerson had taken an avuncular charge over the younger Thoreau, encouraging his writing, introducing him to other famous writers of the age. Thoreau built a small one-room cabin, planted a bean field, and lived off this and from the odd jobs he did around town. Perhaps more importantly to this channel, he took copious notes and journaled the entire time inspiring generations of journalers. We should not endeavor coolly to analyze our thoughts, but keeping the pen even and parallel with the current, make an accurate transcript of them. He would remain there for two years, living with intention recontextualizing his relationships to his family and friends and to the varied society of Concord in those days. Thoreau describes a community of rich and interesting people. So how do you begin journaling? Well, after buying your fountain pen, Whichever one you like, although if you're looking for a suggestion, a Twisby Eco with a fine nib is great for its large ink capacity and smooth writing experience. It's also a fantastic pen to take around with you since it's fairly robust and very easy to carry. And for the journal, there are certainly affordable options at Barnes & Noble, or you can pick up some heavy duty notebooks from Odyssey or others. It doesn't have to be posh as long as it inspires you. It's also nice to find a quiet environment where you may gather your thoughts, separate from the distractions of your life, perhaps put your phone down and wait for the kids to go to bed. Just find a nice quiet corner where you can be yourself and write freely. It's also a bit of a myth that Thoreau was totally isolated 
those two years at Walden Pond. He had simply diminished his wants to the grasp of his means and his needs reduced commensurately. It was the mid 19th century version of van life or going off the grid and he did it with intention, inspiring waves of nonconformists to come. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die discover that I had not lived. Now it is time to begin to write. There are few things as intimidating as an empty page, especially when it's your first time journaling. There is an undisturbed perfection in the paper, a hint of grain the color tone, be it creamy or white, it's like newly fallen snow, it seems a shame to disturb it. There is a certain tension before that first mark, it's best to get it over with. The best thing you can do is to write the date, perhaps the day as well. This is important, this anchors your writing to that moment in your life, you can assess the distances to it and from it. From this moment, you can measure progress, regression, evolution. It's all gradations. And the beauty of a journal is that you can revisit these moments anytime or let them all go. It's really your choice. Thoreau's life was full of ironies and not the least of which was the fact that his contemplations in the Walden Woods led to so much of the area being preserved and indeed to the broader American conservation movement. However, only a year before he built his cabin, he and his friend Edward Hoare had set an accidental fire in the woods that consumed 300 acres. I suppose this is a wonderful lesson that you can always change direction and that you should not judge a life by some of its worst moments, although many of his townspeople never forgave him. Thoreau is also a patron saint of late bloomers. He set off to Walden Woods when he was around 28 years old and lacking a clear direction for his life. His thoughts and writings of those years carried him through the rest of his life. He would revise them continuously until they reached their final form a journal of self-discovery organized around the changing of the seasons. The introspective nature of his journal is the same direction I have seen my journal take. Thoreau's philosophy was deeply influenced by transcendentalism, a movement that emphasized the importance of individual experience and the inherent goodness of nature. In Walden, Thoreau writes about the importance of living a simple, natural life, free from the constraints of society. He believed that the pursuit of material wealth and status was a distraction from the true purpose, and he argued that people should strive to live a life of meaning. It all begins with that single mark. This style of journaling is a way of auditing your mind and your life to keep track of your monologues, decisions, hopes, anxieties. You're writing a guidebook to your inner world, and it's best to describe it unflinchingly and fearlessly. It's best to be honest with yourself and to document it as accurately as possible. After all, you are the only audience unless you choose to share it with someone else. It's all about you and a way to work on being a better person. As for the substance of your writing, I always think it's best to begin by summarizing your day, what you did, who you saw, and what was consequential about it. It's always good to include how certain events made you feel. If you had any anxiety, conflict, or if any worries came up, describe these. 
along with your reactions to them. This is very important because you will find yourself responding to things differently over time, especially as you learn to organize your internal voices. Some of these are helpful, while others are internal saboteurs. You will learn to sort them out and to quiet the negative ones and to see them for what they are. Perhaps only Samuel Pepys rivals Henry David Thoreau as the most famous journaler who ever lived. Thoreau's message of living a simple life has aged very well. As we confront an overwhelming deluge of materialistic and social media distraction, indulging an endless appetite for things without pausing to enjoy them or to consider how or if they fit into your life. Another irony for Thoreau in his message is that at the time, much of the country was living in the frontier and living simply by necessity, and perhaps without the luxury of deep reflection compared to the Harvard-educated Thoreau. Nevertheless, he packed a lot into his short life, choosing to live uncompromisingly and according to his principles. Through this, he paints a way towards a more meaningful future and a resonant life of import and consequence. You will also produce a transcript of your life, internally and externally. The events of your life will serve as a framework to anchor your more complex self-diagnosis. This is just the way journals go. To further keep you inspired, when thinking of what to write, think of working in three different realms, the past, the present, and the future. The past is where you can tell the story of your life and to relate it to something you're doing now. You will find a certain comfort that many of the conflicts you are going through, you have also been through before. You survive them then, and you will survive them now. You will also see over time that the origins of many of your problems have long roots back into the past, and there are many layers of strata in between. Writing all of this down is a way to study it dispassionately. As you keep journaling, these connections and patterns will emerge, and you may feel more in control of your reactions to the struggles of your life and the interactions between you and the people around you. Don't feel as if you must write every day. Be easy on yourself. Do your best and write when you can, but try to write at least three times a week or else the whole enterprise may not become an ingrained habit and you regularly need check-ins with yourself to chart a pattern in your interior life. Now the future realm is theoretical. Here you can project who you want to be and those things you want to accomplish. You can make five-step plans to accomplish your dreams, set all sorts of goals, and really project yourself into the future as the person you wish yourself to be. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. One thing I learned was you have to become who you want to be before good things come to you. The best things in life are based from healthy relationships, and these do not come until you make yourself worthy of them. And this requires a lot of work. It's best to begin now. This is our human struggle, and on this channel, in our little corner of the internet, we are all in it 
together. Is not the poet bound to write his own biography? Is there any other work for him but a good journal? We do not wish to know his imaginary hero, but how he, the actual hero, lived from day to day. There's certainly no right or wrong way to journal, but I hope this video helped to inspire you and to keep you writing, because the more you write, the better you're going to feel about yourself and the world around you. So thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it so much. If you could do me one more favor, please subscribe to the channel. I know about half of you out there aren't subscribed, and it would be fantastic to get to know each other better. Also, memberships to this channel are available, and right now, Cognoscenti and Illuminati members, we're doing a pen pal exchange, so it's super fun. You could be part of that as well. So thank you very much. I hope to see you again very soon. Until then, take care.